You know, in the online marketing world, which I'm in now, uh, we call this a tribe. You know, the people that listen to this podcast are part of my tribe. Uh, you know, it's it's like it's it's an us. It's us versus the world, right? Like we, you guys, identify with having the the motivation and needing to be inspired to grow and scale, to automate, grow, and build a sellable business in the service industry space, right? Like that's my niche. That's where I help and serve and contribute to. Um, and what we're trying to do is build a culture and attach emotion and a story to our tribe. Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast with Joshua Latimer, where we discuss business, life, family, faith, struggle, fire, pain, and ultimately winning. It's time to take massive action. Look, I, I can't work harder on your life or business than you do. It's ultimately all on you. You know, God created all the food the birds would ever need, but he doesn't put it in their nest. You've got to go get it. 10 out of 10 people die. So how about doing something today that actually matters while you still can? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Quick Talk Podcast. Josh here. <clears throat> As you can tell, my voice is a little scratchy because I am at Funnel Hacking Live in Orlando, Florida, and we wrapped up the first main day. Been here for two days. We had like a private event thing uh, on Tuesday. Wednesday was just an amazing, amazing day. We're learning so much, and I want to share some of that with you today. I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Brandon and Derek yesterday. Uh, today, I just I just wanted to share some observations, um, some things that I think are really applicable to you. Uh, it, a lot of you probably have no idea what this event is, or, or maybe don't even care what the event is, and that's okay. Uh, what's really weird about it is that <laughs> there's this software company called ClickFunnels, and ClickFunnels has over 60,000 customers now, but it's only about three years old, and the founder of it is Russell Brunson. And I have a software company, although we don't have 60,000 customers, <laughs> we, uh, we'll get there eventually, right? And as I look at what he's done, and, and I look at this event where 3,000 people paid $1,000 a piece just to show up here, and Tony Robbins is going to be here, and all these amazing people, I look at the culture, and it's, it's really just fascinating, because if you think about an app, software, there's not much emotion attached to it, it's just a tool, it's like a hammer, or a drill or something. Uh, but when you come here, it's different. What Russell's really done that's so interesting, and the reason that I've followed him and tried to l apply a lot of what he teaches into Send Gym is because not not like as a tactic, like, oh, it works. It's just a better way to do business. It's a lot more fun, right? You think of these huge software giants, and then you have this guy like Russell, who him and his par partner, Todd Dickerson, just come up with this really awesome tool, and they just scale it to the moon, and it's just so big, and the community's strong, and people are all in, they're on fire, these people are running around here like maniacs, but really, it's like, okay, it's a hammer, it's a drill, right? But it's more than that. If you if you want to go in the Quick Talk Podcast archives and go back in time, I interview a good friend of mine named Tim Kroll. And Tim is very, very smart. And he had helped build uh, just one of the online businesses uh, that he was involved with to over $6 million a month in t-shirt sales, uh, which is crazy. And he actually came to the Automate Grow Sell Live experience last year, too, because he's from Michigan like me. And uh, one, of, one of his big things that he's always kind of trying to hammer home to me and everybody is how you need to attach emotion to your product or service. That's really important. Emotion is really, really important. And we miss it when we talk about the features of the hammer that we're selling. And whether you clean carpets or you're a maid service, you're a hammer if you want to be. And you can list out all the technical things like we're licensed and insured and we've been in business for 15 years and our customers gave us great reviews, but it's all white noise. It's kind of like, you know, the hammer saying, you know, we have a, you know, aluminum handle and we have this type of triple forged amazing steel or something and there's no emotion to it. But if you can attach a story to the thing... It makes it more powerful, and you can do that in your service company. You can. There's opportunities everywhere, not just in your marketing, but in your customer experience and the way that you build your, your customer base. You know, In the online marketing world, which I'm in now, uh, we call this a tribe. You know, The people that listen to this podcast are part of my tribe. Uh, you know, it's it's like it's it's an us. It's us versus the world, right? Like we, you guys identify with having the 
the motivation and needing to be inspired to grow and scale to automate grow and build a sellable business in the service industry space right like that's my niche that's where i help and serve and contribute to um, and what we're trying to do is build a culture and attach emotion and a story to our tribe. And yes, you know, we have Send Gym and we have some courses that we sell. Um, but it's, it's just a better way to do business in the long run when you can get people to buy into your culture or as, <laughs> as Russell calls it, his culture. <laughs> Not that he has an actual cult. Okay, nothing weird's going on here. Um, but what could you do and what would it do for your business if your employees were part of a cult? Sure. And your customers felt like they're a part of this niche, underground, amazing, super cool kids club culture. What would that be like? And you're probably thinking, oh gosh, I don't get it. Like, how do I do that? Or maybe you got some ideas spinning in your head. But I just want to remind you that attaching emotions, everything. In fact, with Send Gym, I had tried to sell our software for many years. You know, I've been working on this for a long time, not really knowing what I was doing and trying to figure things out. Uh, and I focused on the features, not the benefits. I focused on the buttons and the functionality, but not the emotion of what the, the deliverable gives you, right? As a business owner, the freedom, the what, what you're really getting. And I, did, I just didn't know. I didn't know, right? And so we struggled and we, we, we had really small sales for a software company with such big upside. I couldn't get the thing to work right. And one of the big things that was missing was emotion and this is a highly emotionally charged place. People are crying. They're showing this documentary last night of this uh, this nonprofit that rescues kids that are in sex slavery. It was just unbelievable, the connection that Russell has and all this stuff. And uh, I could talk forever about it. Um, but what happened was my buddy Tim Kroll, the t-shirt guy, the $6 million a month t-shirt guy, he had told me, uh, actually on that podcast, he's like, Josh, you got to attach emotion to Radius Bomb because I was about to release Radius Bomb, which is like one of our coolest features we've ever built, right? Where you can use a map and you can target just the specific neighborhoods or homes that you want to send direct mail to, right? And you can, it's just amazing. Um, but so what he did is he got my wheels turning. And when I did our launch webinar where I showed people Radius Bomb for the first time and made an offer for them to get it for a really good deal. And it was a sales presentation, but there was teaching in it too. Uh, I went really heavy on emotion. I went all in. And guess what? It worked a lot. And I think we did, we did well over $100,000 immediately just off of that one webinar, which takes an hour to do, right? And the difference was, is that I always had the hammer. People always needed the hammer, but I attached emotion to the hammer. Uh, and you can do that in your business. And we're working hard to do that more and more and more. In fact, with the sales and marketing super course that's out, by the way, you should go there because that's going to launch on the 29th. And it's going to be something that you don't want to, to, to screw up and miss out on. Uh, it's a life-changing thing. But if you want to look at me adding emotion to things, just at least go to the URL where you can put your email in and, and opt in for the, the webinar I'll do for that. But just watch the video at the top. <laughs> I think I'm going to play the audio for that video sometime. I spent a lot of time crafting the copy and, and the words I use in that video. You just go to supermarketingcourse.com. It's applicable to all home service businesses. Um, and the, the reviews are unbelievable. I have over 50 video titles. Just go online into like one of the groups that I'm a part of, the Growth Father, and just ask people about Supercourse. Uh, it speaks for itself. It's, it's, it's insane. So what I want to encourage you to do is to remember that emotion is really important. And then the, the second part of today's podcast is about how hard it is to get initial momentum. And I look at these people at this event, and there's some really high producing people here. Lots and lots of people with 10 million plus dollar businesses. A lot of the people in Russell's inner circle with me have $10 million businesses or more than one $10 million business. And they're all young businesses, like two, three, four years old, stuff like that. And I'm looking at them, and I'm talking to them, and I'm building relationships with people, trying to understand and listen and learn and keep my mouth shut and my ears open. And the biggest thing that I notice that's different uh, is that they are action takers, that they go for it. They are ready, fire, aim type people. And that makes perfectionist people really uncomfortable because you want to overanalyze and strategize. But really, if you're honest with yourself deep down, you know that you need to just go do that commercial sales day that you've been putting off or you need to go get those 5,000 door hangers out or you need to go meet those 10 realtors and take them bagels to their office in the morning. There's something that you're not doing out of fear that is crushing 
your ability to scale your business. It's killing it. Now, you don't see it that way because you'll you'll keep yourself occupied with busy work or do something that's not really going to make a dent in your business, and you still feel good about yourself because you're doing something, but you're not doing the right things. Uh, for example, when we got uh, off our airplane, I was picking up Derek, who lives in Arkansas and flew out of Dallas, and I'm coming from Michigan. I get a rental truck, a rental car, or whatever, and uh, I like renting like F-150, so we have more room in case you want to hang out with friends while we're doing stuff. And uh, Akbar Sheik is a guy that's in the inner circle, and he's uh, he was homeless a few years ago. And uh, now he has several seven-figure businesses. He charges like twenty grand to work with them, or something like that. And he has a ten million dollars business that sells mattresses on the internet. And he had came out of the airplane with Derek, and they were talking, and we gave him a ride, him and his team. And I got to know him a little bit, and it was just fascinating listening to this guy. You know, of course he's intelligent and smart and sharp and all that, but what's the difference between him and his brother literally being homeless like four or five years ago, or maybe it was six years ago, to doing what he's doing now? And he gets here, the guy's like a celebrity or whatever because he's in the internet marketing world. Uh, nobody knows who I am here, which is awesome. I can just sit here and be an attendee and like take notes, which is amazing. Um, but I'm like, what is the difference? And then you see all these people from all over the country, some of them high achievers, most of them not, though. Most of them not. Most of them are here because they want to achieve something. They're excited. So they see the Akbars, or they see like the dozens of other people that are internet famous for doing these types of things, and they're just hoarding around them and running towards them. And, uh, but when I have private conversations with all the, the internet famous people, uh, there's very little difference. Like, they're smart and stuff, but like you listening to this, so are you. You know you are. Like, you know you're capable. There's a part of you that knows that you're freaking awesome at something, that you have a superhero power. Like, but the difference is, is that we don't get off the ground. We don't take enough massive action in the beginning to get the thing freaking going. And I was talking to Brandon Vaughn last night about this, and he said, hey, Josh, and he told me this whole story about a train, like a, a freight train, a giant freaking, I don't know, 50 train cars attached to the, 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 the engine on the front train. And if, if that whole thing is just raw power, right? But when it's not moving, when it's completely stopped, he said you can actually take a one-inch squared piece of steel, a little cube of steel, just one, and put it in front of the front wheel of the engine, and the train will never get going. It will never get going. Is that insane? How cool is Brandon Vaughn for, for telling me that? And uh, the analogy I always use is, you know, an airplane taking off, how much crazy amounts of fuel is being burned just to get the plane down the runway and to get it off the ground by one foot. To get airborne by one foot takes a tremendous amount of effort, more effort than you're probably aware of more effort than maybe you were initially prepared to put into your business but it's the truth but if you can do that it doesn't have to be perfect if you can get it off the ground by one foot if you can get the train moving a little bit and remove that roadblock right that little that little steel cube that's blocking you if you can get going and get airborne things are easier i wonder how much fuel an, an airplane burns per foot right while it's on the runway compared to when it's going 550 miles an hour at 30,000 feet, right? Can you, you see what I'm saying? You know, how much more easy is it to operate when you're at scale when the business is up? The hard part is spinning up the initial momentum, you know, getting from nothing up to that million dollar mark so you can have a full team and you can have real freedom. Like, and you can do it at less than a million, but don't lose my point here. I just want you to feel inspired, but I also want to hold you accountable uh, for, to yourself to, to remove the roadblock and to freaking go for it and to just push hard enough to get airborne. You know, you know, most people aren't going fast enough down the runway to get off the ground. And so, you know, they just keep going kind of fast and they have to stop, turn around and go back down the runway the other way and then turn around and they're not getting off the ground. I want you to get off the ground. I'm surrounded by these amazing people. I have all these relationships with these people. It's amazing. It's like I don't even know how this happened, right? I was just a window cleaner. And the people that I know now, it's just weird. But when I hang out with them, the thing that's really becoming evident to me is that they're just going for it. They're just doing it, right? And you can too. You can. It's all in your head. So anyway, I'm going to uh, get around and go to the event here. Uh, I want to wish you guys a great week. And uh, I don't know. Uh, I do want to encourage you. 
to go to supermarketingcourse.com. Don't forget, don't wait, just go there, pop your email in, and you'll get notified when we launch it. And I'll do this whole you know dog and pony show that's amazing and reveal to you what's in it and all the teachers and all the content and kind of pull back the curtain and show you, you know, the secrets of why do some businesses do more revenue in a month than 96% of everybody else does an entire year. Like, what are those actual differences? Would you like to know what they are? Would you like to be able to stand over the shoulder of someone who is 20 levels beyond where you are and just kind of peek over the shoulder and look at what they do as they explain to you, do this and then this and then this? Would you want like the nuts and the bolts? That's what the super course is. And there's a lot of bonuses and it's amazing and blah, blah, blah. Trust me, you're going to punch yourself if you don't get in on this when it comes out initially. I promise you, if you can even hear it in my voice, this is like the least salesy I've I've ever been with something because the level of belief and confidence that I have and what I've put together here with the team of instructors that have contributed to this is unlike anything the service industry has seen ever, ever. And it's amazing. So go to supermarketingcourse.com and while you're there, read some of the copy, watch the video at the top in full and try to understand how I'm attaching emotion to my hammer, right? <laughs> if this course was a hammer, I need it to emotionally move you so that you actually take action, so you get the result and the benefit of uh, a product like this. So anyway, I think you guys are awesome, and uh, give me some feedback. Let me know what you're thinking about these types of episodes. You know, I can sit here and talk about perceived value systems or accounting or finance or how to bid something. Or I can talk a little bit about this too. Uh, keep to keep my finger on the pulse of what you guys want, what you're responding to. You got to share these episodes. If this has moved you, if this is powerful, if this can help somebody, you got to share it. So like and share it. Thank you so much for the iTunes reviews. Please, 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 please keep those coming. Uh, we want to get to 250 iTunes reviews, and we got a long ways to go. And I really need your guys' help sincerely to get the word out. Thank you. Take care. And God bless. Hey, thanks for hanging out, friends. And from all of us here at the Quick Talk Podcast team, we hope you love today's show. We hope that you were inspired to become a doer and not just a listener. Apply what you've heard today in your own business and watch things change for the better. Lastly, remember that all the money in the world can't save your soul. Seek first the kingdom of God, my friends. We'll see you next time. For more information about the Quick Talk Podcast or Joshua's other businesses, visit our website, quicktalkpodcast.com. Have a blessed day.